this month's edition of North Central Outdoors. I'm your host, Nathan Karch. I want to briefly touch on the end of boating. We are there. Um, it's the end of summer, unfortunately. I love summer. But, you know, it's bittersweet. We get to move on to fall, and with fall, that means there is a big game season involved, and that's deer hunting. Um, so before we dive straight into deer hunting, I, I briefly want to talk about uh, a little bit of boating. Um, since it is the end of the season, there are a few tips that I would want to give you, and that's just basically for winterizing your boat. If you are not going to get out there until the end of next season, please, please just take these, these tips into consideration because it will save you a lot of headache um, before you get out next season. So, And this especially pertains to you if you store your boat outdoors. Not so much indoors, but 100% outdoors. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just change all your fluids. Uh, that's very, very important. You're going to want to change your oil. And whenever you're changing fluids, uh, do the filters as well. So get your oil filter changed. Uh, fuel filter, you want your hydraulic fluid for your power trim um, and tilt. Uh, so go ahead and change that. And then your, your lower unit gear fluid as well. Um, it's a, a very, very good practice. That way, you know, you're not going to have to do it at the the beginning of next season. Um, also, fuel stabilizer. That's probably one of the most important things because somebody might fill their tank up right at the end of the season and then that just sits dormant all winter long and the ethanol in there will build up. It'll gunk up your internals of your motor and it's just not good. It'll, um, it'll make your carburetor just all nasty and you know, potentially you'll have to rebuild it or get a whole new one, and that's very costly. So, uh, you know, like a six or seven dollar bottle of fuel stabilizer will go a long way. So just dump that whole can in there, and uh, it'll be an easy startup for next season. And uh, you know, it, it it'll be good. So just just do those tips and uh, and winterize your boat, and and you'll be good to go. Now we're gonna dive into the 2019 deer season. I'm, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the velvet season, touch on bow season, and then muzzleloader season. So first, uh, the velvet hunt, that was in August for three days. Uh, it was a good hunt, but the numbers were down from last year. Uh, the weather was kind of on par for last year as well. We got a couple of rainy days cool mornings but really really hot days and you know the the big deer uh, while they're easy to pattern they just weren't moving just due to it being so hot so with less numbers being killed this year that means there's more deer in the woods for the later seasons uh, bow muzzleloader and rifle so that's that's a good thing um, so jumping into bow season I uh, want to briefly touch on uh, licenses um, for bow season, you're going to want to purchase a Type 10. Uh, muzzleloader is going to be a Type 11. I, I know I've touched on this thousands of times before on previous segments, uh, especially pertaining to big game, um, but you can build your own license, really, if you don't partake in a lot of outdoor events. If you just deer hunt, you can get that Type 001, which is your small game and fish uh, combo. And then say you only bow hunt, you can actually purchase that Type 10 license and you can hunt throughout the rest of deer season with just those two licenses. Uh, or, you know, if you muzzleloader, rifle, you can build on that as well. Now, you got the sportsman option. If you like to, say, duck hunt, turkey hunt, uh, fish, trout fish, that is our all-inclusive license that you can purchase that will cover every supplemental license available in the state. And then, of course, you've got your, your lifetime license holders, which is the exact same thing uh, as a sportsman license. There are some options available for the non-residents. If you are a non-resident, but you may own hunting land or a big lease, um, here in Tennessee, you can get your annual non-resident license. And um, I'm not exactly sure how much that is right now, but there is that option available. And then if you're only wanting to hunt for about a week, we do have a week-long license available for non-residents. Um, with bow season, there is not a requirement for orange, or blaze orange, but for muzzleloader, there is. So you're going to need 500 square inches of blaze orange clothing, and all that will consist of is a vest or a jacket and a ball cap or um, just a beanie. 
if you want. Um, so we're not going to be out there measuring with uh, a tape measure or anything like that, making sure that you got 500 square inches. We just ask vest and hat, that, that's it. So anytime you're dealing with a firearm season, always have that blaze orange uh, clothing on. And I would encourage those, if you're out in the woods and you're not even partaking in hunting, uh, just be mindful that there could be hunters in that area and, and wear some type of bright clothing that way. Uh, you know, somebody doesn't mistake you for a deer. With any type of big game hunting, and whether it be bow, firearm, muzzle or whatever, you're going to want to have that hunter education requirement complete that is uh, mandated by law in Tennessee that you have completed a, a, a hunter education safety course. Uh, if you have not completed it, you can actually purchase consecutively three years. It's a hunter apprentice license, but you've got to be accompanied by someone who does possess that certification or 21 years of older um, that may possess it from an out of state. We, we do recognize out of state hunter ed certifications. They're reciprocal, very much like our handgun carry permit laws or someone that is born before uh, January 1st of 1969. Those born before that do not have to have that certification. So uh, just, you have to be accompanied by adult that can make, can take immediate control of the firearm uh, if you're acting in an unsafe manner. Um, with, with bow season especially, and muzzleloader and, and the rest of the big game season, a lot of people love tree stands. Be mindful that if you leave your tree stand out year long, you know, just due to the weathering, there could be some issues with that. Please, please inspect your tree stand, making sure all the, the bolts, the locking nuts, the washers and everything, they're, they're all up to par and uh, you can climb that safely. Uh, always use a haul line to get your gear up and maintain three points of contact. We don't want you trying to get all your gear up at one time while you're climbing up there. Use that haul line to, to get it up and uh, you know it'll be good. And then always use your safety harness every single time. It doesn't matter even if you're six feet off the ground, please use your safety harness uh, because all it takes is just, you know, one little uh, maybe mechanical failure on the tree stand or a big gust of wind or a tree branch breaks off there. There could be a, a ton of different scenarios that arise, but uh, it's always a good practice to wear that tree stand harness because your family wants you home and uh, I want you home. Uh, so always please practice in a safe manner. With bow season, not so much. Muzzleloader season, you're dealing with a tremendous amount of vegetation, all the uh, stuff that makes you really itch and breaks you out in rashes and stuff like that. And then every single bug imaginable that wants to suck a liter of blood out of you or cling to you and everything like that. And uh, a lot of these bugs uh, and insects transmit diseases. So be careful, always wear some bug spray. Um, there, are different bug sprays that you can actually treat your clothing uh, before you even go out uh, hunting and that's the the permanon or permethrin um, it's it's very very good it will actually stain your clothes up to five to ten washes or you can just use uh, the the generic uh, off or repel something that contains some sort of deed in it um, and everybody is is really liking these thermocells um, I've not used one personally but it basically uh, has a, a little bubble around you that kind of protects you uh, and it it's a little butane cartridge and they've got some sort of wafer um, that it, it contains DEET and basically it blows it and I know that there are scentless insect, insect sprays out there um, if you're you know really really wanting to to go the scentless route I know during bow season you don't have to pay attention so much on scent control um, as you do maybe during the rut and muzzleloader season. Um, and especially the, the camouflage route, uh, there's a ton of vegetation on trees, so you can get away with a lot of stuff that you couldn't during the later season. But please uh, put the bug spray on. We, we want you to, uh, to be able to enjoy many hunting seasons to come and, and not catch some sort of crazy disease and have itchy, nasty welts all over your body. Also, with the very, very warm weather, uh, I know right now um, it's, it's going to get a, in the upper 90s today. Um, 
and it that seemed to be the the pattern for the past couple weeks it's going to be in the mid 90s so if you're hunting during times like this be mindful if you kill a deer uh the insects and uh basically the the warm temperatures are going to get to that deer immediately and the meat could spoil so hopefully you can locate that deer once you've got it on the ground and field dress it and then pack it full of ice if not the the meat is probably going to spoil so Always prepare that whenever you go hunting, uh, there's a, a very good chance that you'll kill it and just kind of have a game plan established beforehand uh, to extract that deer from the woods so you can save that meat. Going into WMA rules, if you hunt wildlife management areas, which is public land, uh, if you're doing that building type of license, you're going to have to purchase a type 93 or 94. Uh, both of them are kind of the same thing. It allows you to hunt does as well, and then it allows you to go on to any public land in the entire state. And, and there are a little bit of specific rules pertaining to public land, not so much private, but you can actually hang a, uh, a stand on public land. You can leave it out there all season long. Contact the, uh, the manager of that wildlife management area property and they will kind of give you directions on how to do that. Uh, most WMAs ask that you basically put it out a week prior to uh, the hunting season and then you need to have it down uh, a week after hunting season closes. So all you need to do once you hang it is just put your TWRI ID number on that stand. It doesn't matter what kind of stand it is. Uh, put that on there. Make sure that uh, big rain, ice, or anything like that, the environmental conditions cannot get that off. And then if you want to run cameras as well, uh, just put that TWRA ID number on that camera. And since it is public land, I would be mindful that there are a lot of other people out in those woods and not, not the best people in the world at, at times. Um, so they might want to take your stuff and uh, it's, it's been occurring already, and we're receiving several calls of that. And let's face it, hunters in general, um, there's a lot of people that don't like us. I am a hunter. Um, I love to hunt, and, and there's a lot of people that do not like what I do. Uh, you, you've got several people who are just out to basically distract you in any way and try to get the deer to flee or whatever big game that you might be, be hunting. They, they don't want to see any animal harm. They're, they're big animal advocates. And uh, if, if that ever happens, please contact us because that is hunter harassment. If you're at the edge of the woods or somebody's riding up and down the road, blowing their horn or making a lot of noise, somebody decides to start mowing their grass or, or, or blowing um, weeds off the, their driveway that you, you know, hunt close to at 5 o'clock in the morning or they're blaring loud music, please give us a call. Uh, we we want to help out. Um, because we, we know that all hunters are not respected like they, they need to be. Um, but back to the, the stands, we're getting several calls of people vandalizing tree stands. Now, it's, it's very hard to remove a ladder stand. It's kind of, once it's up, it's up. But if you are hunting with a, a climber or a hang-on stand or lock-on, we do ask that you know, you can leave it there if you want to. You have every right to do so as long as you got that ID number on there. But to basically minimize the chance of somebody stealing your stand or vandalizing it, vandalizing it for that matter, take your climbing sticks down to where your your stand's just hanging there. Or if you if you have a climber, just take the whole stand out and, and just backpack it in because we don't want your stuff to get stolen. Um, and if, if you have a camera out there and you do get somebody close to your stand or, you know, you see them vandalizing it, uh, please, please contact us as soon as possible. That way we can look into it. Um, also, if you, this pertains to private land too, you, the public, are our eyes and our ears. And normally there's only one or two game wardens per county. So we rely heavily on the public's information to make a lot of our big game cases. So please be on the lookout for any type of sketchy poaching activity, whether it be uh, baiting. If you have some uh, intel on that, please let us know. Uh, if you see anyone riding 
up and down the roads really, really slowly at night trying to locate some wildlife, please let us know about that. If you see any type of spotlighting activity, um, if you see any ray of light cast out into a field at night on your road or anywhere else, if you're just driving by and you see that, we want to know about it. Especially if you hear a shot from a road or you see someone stick a gun out the window, please notify us. We really, really need to look into that. Um, a couple things that we ask for, if you see that, please, please, I can't stress this enough, get a license plate number or a tag number uh, or at the very least get a vehicle description. And if you can get a look at the, the subjects or subject inside the vehicle, um, a physical description, we really, really need that. But a tag number will you know, be a tremendous amount of help. That way we have somewhere to look. Uh, otherwise, you know, we can jot it down as basically a hot spot and a location that we need to give some attention to. But other than that, we don't have really anything to go on. So tag number, uh, physical description of the subject and uh, vehicle description, if all possible. If you see any of that type of activity that I had just previously said, please contact our poaching hotline uh, and our region two dispatch. Um, that number is going to be 615-781-6581. Again, that's 615-781-6581. That is our region two dispatch that covers basically all the, the northern portion uh, counties in, in middle Tennessee. Um, that will consist of Smith, Sumner, Trialsdale, Macon, uh, Wilson, Cheatham, Davidson, Rutherford, Cannon, Montgomery, uh, all of those counties. So, so please, and there, there may be a, a couple that I, I forgot, um, but it, it will greatly help us out. And then I'm going to give out my cell phone number, and if I, if I can't help you, I will contact the officer in the county that can help you, and they will get with you as soon as possible. My, my personal number, my work number, <clears throat> is 615-571-0329. Again, 615-571-0329. If I do not answer, please leave a voicemail uh, just stating who you are and what you got going on, and uh, I will be happy to get back with you, and I'll probably get back with you very, very soon, but if I'm not working, normally if, if it's a day off or something like that and you try to contact me, I'm probably not going to answer the first go around. But if you leave me a message, I'll almost immediately get back with you. Uh, and, and text me as well. E even if you have a question for anything else, text me. Um, I'll get back with you. I'll, I'll give you the, the proper information. If I can, I'll find somebody who can give that to you if it's just not as important. And then you can always email me at nathan.karch at tn.gov. So that's all the contact information um, that, uh, that I've, I've got. Uh, so please, please contact us again. You're our eyes and ears, and, and we, we love uh, some, some feedback. And any type of questions um, that I can answer, please give me a shout. And before I close, uh, I want to give you some information. If you are interested in hunting public land, I know the availability of private land is getting more scarce uh, every single year due to leases and developments and things like that. So uh, if you're wanting to, to hunt public land, please visit our website at tnwildlife.org and you can actually uh, click on uh, our GIS maps for our uh, wildlife management areas and it will basically give you all the wildlife management areas in the entire state. Uh, what is huntable, what is safety zones, uh, the parking areas, it, it's very in-depth, it's very, very good, it's color-coded. But also an easier route if, if you're just wanting to Google something, uh, Google TWRA Huntable Lands and, and it will pop up as some GIS maps or just all of our wildlife management areas in, in general. There will be a couple of links just right off the bat when you Google that and uh, it'll get you set. So uh, that concludes uh, this month's edition of North Central Outdoors. I hope everybody has a great time out in the woods. Uh, get out there. Uh, be safe, and we'll see you next time.